Ghosts of Our Ancestors. Howdy there, I'm Rick, the lead field researcher with the University of California San Diego Center for Paleoanthropology and Hominid Origins. Since I was a teenager, I've suffered from recurrent headaches. Not quite migraines, maybe, but regular episodes that knock me off my feet. With the help of medicine and stress management, and with a little good old-fashioned hard work, I was able to make my way through school and advance through my career to this leadership position in America's finest city. I get a lot of satisfaction from what I do. I feel a connection to our ancestors while contributing to the scientific research on humanity's past. However, I also feel a calling towards something bigger, a mission I can't quite describe. As a scientist, I know we humans are hardwired for purpose, and that our minds can trick us into perceiving causal links that aren't there. However, there's something about my calling that seems real, and I think I'm living it out every day. At the moment, I'm based in Hanksville, Utah, on an assignment with my team, studying some of the pictographs in the isolated maze district of Canyonlands National Park. Hanksville is the kind of place where real cowboys walk around town with bow legs and spurs, and guns are available right along with the gum and candy bars at the local gas station. Locals wouldn't have it any other way, and claim it makes them one of the safest locations in the country. That may or may not be the case, and I'm not sure what security checks, if any, might be involved. However, it feels a world away from San Diego, and that just shows the variety of lifestyles in the American Southwest. The pictographs we're studying were painted on the canyon walls 8,000 to 1,600 years ago by the Archaic people, about whom very little is known, although they seem to have been a pre-ceramic culture. The harvest scene, as it's known, features trapezoidal anthropomorphs surrounded by small animals and hunched-over figures who are gathering plant food. If this interpretation is correct, the scene represents an essential stage in the development of agriculture. A figure to the right with a raised hand seems to have a stalk of Indian rice grass sprouting from its middle finger. This grass would have been a staple food for non-agricultural groups in the area. Feet of a visibly different color seem to have been painted onto these figures thousands of years later by a different culture. Perhaps there was a catastrophic event, such as a bad harvest or a flood, which was blamed on the originally floating figures of the pictograph panel. These ghostly floating figures must have been grounded and brought back to earth by the ceremonial addition of feet. Today, I'm using a spectrometer to analyze the light given off by the various pigments of the pictograph in order to non-invasively determine their mineral composition. This is similar to the spectroscopy research performed by the James Webb Space Telescope to analyze the composition of the atmosphere of other planets. In this case, I'm hoping this information will help us learn more about the origins of these pictographs. Toward the end of the day, when our work is done, the team prepares for the long drive on Jeep trails back to Hanksville. But I feel another headache coming on, and I have a hunch some alone time with the canyon would do me good. So, rather than returning to Hanksville for the night with the rest of the team, I decide to spend the night camping on nearby public land. After a relaxing dinner next to the Red Rock, I feel better, but I have some business to wrap up before hitting the sack for the night. As I'm uploading my data from the day to the cloud for safe storage via the satellite link-up from my campsite, I notice an email from some professional associates in Spain. Their recent analysis of pictographs 
from a local cave returned an age from before Homo sapiens had first arrived in Europe. This could only mean our close hominid relatives, Neanderthals, had made the painting and that they were far more artistically creative than we first thought. Combined with a recent Neanderthal flute found in a cave in Slovenia, the evidence is adding up that Neanderthals were more like us than we might have imagined. In fact, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens interbred, leading to about 20% of Neanderthal DNA surviving in modern-day humans, although individual humans only have about 2% Neanderthal DNA. That means offspring from Neanderthals and Homo sapiens must have been capable of having further offspring, and so Homo sapiens and Neanderthals must have been more similar than today's horses and donkeys, whose offspring, mules, are sterile. The funny thing about the pictographs from Spain is that some of the handprints in the cave are missing a pinky finger. The handprints are of different sizes, and must have come from different individuals. What are the odds that all these people had accidentally lost the same finger? Could this have been a ritualistic amputation, perhaps to gain respect from the community or favor from the gods? Did Neanderthals have spirituality? These missing fingers remind me of the extra fingers and toes depicted in rock art in Chaco Canyon in New Mexico. Perhaps uranium in the ground caused mutations, leading to these extra digits. Could these extra digits have conveyed similar honor and respect to the Chaco culture people, as the missing digits might have to the Neanderthals of Spain? With these thoughts in my head, I drifted off to sleep. My name is Gluck, the most respected scout of my clan. For days, my party has sailed down the coast in a convoy of many ships, always keeping the land and the rising sun on the same side of our bodies as the beating life force within our chests. For generations, our people have pushed through the ice and snow, seeking land where we could live better lives. Our oral tradition tells us that we face less ice and cold and therefore have easier lives than our ancestors. So we push forward and continue to explore so that our children will have even better lives. We have recently landed on a part of the coast that is sheltered from the waves by a stretch of earth extending out into the sea, and our hunting party has killed several mastodons. We have saved half of their meat to sustain us on our journey home, and we will use the other half of their meat to celebrate the discovery of this coast sheltered from the waves, where mastodons roam the land and feast with our kin once we arrive home. Today, we will sustain ourselves on the marrow from the crushed mastodon bones. I awaken slowly from my dream to the sound of a heavenly female voice singing as she moves up and down the register, feeling as if I've been communing with the ghosts of our ancestors all night. Snap out of it, Rick, I tell myself. It's just the wind blowing through the natural arches, and it was just a crazy, vivid dream. I emerge from my tent, make some black coffee, and check my messages via the satellite link-up. It's time to meet up with my team in Hanksville and head back to San Diego. Construction workers at the freeway expansion site of State Route 54 have found something that could be big, and my team needs to check it out so the construction work can continue again as soon as possible. On the flight back from Salt Lake City, I'm puzzled by how clear-headed I feel. Normally, the stress of travel and the change in air pressure in airplane cabins trigger a headache for me. But I've been feeling lucid since my dream last night and that angelic voice this morning. And my headache from yesterday never fully materialized. Perhaps I'm turning a corner with this affliction. 
My team and I complete our excavation of the highway expansion site as quickly as possible, finding several bones which later study and analysis reveal are mastodon bones, likely intentionally crushed and broken by early hominids. Uranium-thorium dating of the bones reveals them to be around 130,700 years old. Until now, the scientific consensus is that humans first arrived in North America 25,000 to 16,000 years ago. So this discovery points to a far earlier first date of human habitation of the continent. Further research is always needed, but I'm elated with my team's discovery. Perhaps this is what I've felt called to all these years. All I know is that I haven't had a headache since that night in the canyon when I dreamed of our ancestors hunting mastodon near the coast. One thing's for sure, I'm not resting on these laurels, and I'm not slowing down. This is Daniel Tujour. I hope you've enjoyed this short story, Ghosts of Our Ancestors. It's a work of fiction, but it's based on several real archaeological sites. If you'd like to support my work, or just get a copy of my main non-fiction book, Ghosts of the Wilderness, where I talk about my adventures hiking throughout the American Southwest looking for animals and artifacts that I haven't seen in thousands of miles of hiking, please click on the link in the description below. Thank you.